I feel like I'm like a hot mess today. Like my hair is staticky. Things are just like in the way. <laughs> I'm super awkward. Anyway, hi friends, it's Anne here. And today's video is a little get ready with me featuring the Natasha Denona Retro Palette. So I got this in my Beautylish Lucky Bag. I'm gonna use a couple other things from that as well. So we're gonna, we're gonna try and play with this, the Danessa Myricks Color Effects Foils. Forget the name of this shade. I'll put it on the screen. I think it's called Venus. Um, and then I have a couple other goodies that I'm gonna play with as well. And yeah, it's just gonna be a little chit chatty, throwing on some makeup. I'm gonna try and do a dramatic look. I tried to do a dramatic look in my last Get Ready With Me and then it ended up not being, well, I wanted it to be bright and it ended up not being as bright as I expected. So let's get into this. I may have to get up and adjust my set up in a minute if the light goes crazy. <laughs> it's pretty early here. And yeah, I just wanted to play with makeup this morning and see what we come up with. So I'm just gonna start off with the Maybelline Age Rewind in, I think this is just light. And I'm just gonna use this to sort of like prime the eyelids. I don't know where to look. <laughs> I've got my computer monitor here, the camera monitor thingy there, and then my mirror over here. I should be, should be looking at the mirror. So how y'all doing? On my last little get ready with me, I had a little giveaway, which is now closed. It just closed. I'll be honest, I have not picked the winner yet because I've just been lazy. Um, I think it literally just closed. So I'm gonna do that right after this video. So I never, people always ask like, who won, who won? Are you gonna announce? I never announce who won. Um, some people who win decide to post on like Instagram or like share in a video that, you know, they've won or whatever, but I don't wanna put that pressure or like, some people are just like, I know I'm I'm not super comfortable necessarily like if I won something. I don't know. It's different now that I have a channel, but I think pre-channel me would have been like, yeah, I don't really want to share that I won. Like maybe with my friends and family, but not like publicly. So I'm going to start off with this color called, I think it's Go-Go. We're going to just throw that all over, all over. And I'm going to use the Sonia G brush that I got, the Worker One brush. I'm using this as an all-over base. I need to put some lip balm on. So I just wanted to get that sort of all over and somewhat blended up the way. Sort of as a base color. Now, do I go in? Okay, I think I'm gonna go in with um, Amara or Amara? Amara. I think that's the shade right here. It's called Amara. We're going to start, I'm just going to start deepening up like from the lash line up. <laughs> we'll see how that goes. So what's going on in your world? Um, if you're following the news, <laughs> I don't know how to not mention this. I feel like I need to mention this, but I don't want to talk about it for too long <sighs> because that explains my whole feelings about everything, I think. Anyway, if you're following along with the news at all, and you know that I'm Canadian, you'll have seen the little, I don't want to call it little, that's <laughs> the trucker convoy. That's not even the right name for it anymore because it has just morphed into this horrible, ridiculous thing. And I'm afraid to talk about it because I know no matter what I say, I'm going to say something that's going to make somebody angry. <laughs> Um, so I don't want to talk too much about it. Um, I will say that I don't support it. Totally support people being free to protest. Totally support people, you know, fighting for freedom. I put that in quotes because I still question what freedom am I, I'm a missing here. <laughs> like you were literally able to drive across the country and set up post in the capital. I'm sorry, are you not free? <laughs> like. I'm really confused about a lot of stuff. Um, I'm not confused at all. I'm being very sarcastic. But yeah, it's just the one thing that I will say, and again, I don't, I don't speak on behalf of all Canadians, but pretty confident that most of us do not support this. This really is a small group of people. 
led by people with very bad intentions and getting money from very bad places. So yeah, it's just, yeah, if I, if I start getting into this, I'll start going into like historical stuff and I'll start going into like political stuff and we're here for makeup, but just so you know, yeah, I don't support it and most people I know don't support it. I will say I do know a handful of people that they support it, but those people that I know are terribly misguided and I'm very worried about them going down the rabbit hole. And I will say, you know, I'm, I'm no fan of police. Um, you know, again, I don't want to get into too much on that. I don't really trust police, but I will say, you know, we're, give credit where credit is due. I am thankful that Toronto police has been on the ball. So I didn't film at all last weekend because I was expecting the honking coming here. And I was like, I don't, I, I probably won't be able to film. Um, luckily that did not happen. Um, Toronto police were right on the ball. They even did that again this weekend. They sort of shut down the highway so people aren't able to drive trucks. I can actually just hear helicopters. So yeah, I've been hearing the helicopters going around yesterday and today. Um, yesterday there was a, a few honkies that made it downtown before they blocked off the highway. Um, and again, I appreciate people have the right to protest. They have the right to express their opinion in our country without retribution. Some of those opinions, you can express your opinion, but this is where it gets confusing. Not confusing, but it's like some opinions are just shit. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how, how else to put that without going, you know, down a rabbit hole. But I think you know what I mean when I say that. Um, you you have a right to express your opinion, but go home. <laughs> like, and that's the thing. Like, I think in Toronto here, we're used to protests. I mean, we've had anti-mass protests pretty much every Saturday, traipsing around the city for like the last two years. Kind of, it's like, don't you have anything better to do? But anyway, um, and I think that's something that happened, or some people had said in Ottawa, like when they came first to protest, they're used to people. People protest at, protest at parliament all the time. Go nuts. But then you go home <laughs> after that. Um, and I guess the only other thing I do want to mention, because it really grinds my gears, and I, I'm well aware of how emotional or how, how this trigger, <laughs> triggers me. I'm gonna use the word triggered because it triggers me. We all get triggered. Doesn't matter what side of the fence you're on. There's things that like really grind your ge gears. gears. And this past weekend, they set up a full bloody stage. <laughs> and some people are sitting in hot tubs. I just feel really bad for the people that are right, that live right there, because that's a huge slap in the face. Huge slap in the face. Uh, but you know, you're not free. You gotta fight for your freedoms. <laughs> anyway, we're not gonna talk about that anymore. That's that. Um, I just hope that everything gets resolved peacefully and people, especially in Ottawa and in Windsor, can get on with their lives. It's like their whole lives have been disrupted. I feel so sorry for the people in Ottawa. Like, especially the ones, like there's been people that have obviously been able to leave downtown. Some people can't leave, like they have nowhere else to go and they're having to live with that. It's very not fair. Anyway, what does this look like? What does it look like on camera? I'm kind of liking the way it looks in person, um, but, Let's now try. Oh yeah, what's the name? It's right there on the lid in giant letters, Venus. I don't, I don't know how I'm gonna apply this. I think I'm gonna put it on the back of my hand first and then, I don't know. I don't know what I'm doing here. <laughs> We're just playing and hopefully something good comes out of it. Um, in other news, in other questions, what are you guys, what are you watching on TV? What are you uh, listening to in music? What books are you reading? I'm so curious. I feel like, um, TV, I'm not a big TV watcher. I feel like everybody else is like, have you seen this series? And have you seen this series? I don't think this is going to work. Oh, well, oh, there we go. Okay. No, we're good. We're good. Um, and I'm like, yeah, it's on my list. <laughs> but I just, I take forever to get around to watching things. The one thing that I'm currently watching, but again, I'm kind of going slow with it, is the 
Mr. Mercedes series. It's on Amazon Prime. It's based off of the books by Stephen King. And I've read, it's a, a trilogy. I feel like I said that word weird. Um, three books, Mr. Mercedes, Finders Keepers, and End of Watch. And I just finished the books, so I wanted to watch the show. I will admit, the first book, Mr. Mercedes, is really hard to read. <laughs> like, really hard to read. Um, it's a lot of it's from the perspective of like the really bad guy and he's a really bad guy. Um, so it's really, it was difficult to read. Um, but it's a really good series. Like there's really good characters in it. Um, and I like how they've done the show. I mean, there's things that was interesting. I'm curious to know what you guys think. Like I like to read the books before I watch a series. If there's a book version, if I know about it and I can read the books. Um, the one set of books I really want to read now is the wheel of wheel of time. Yes, I think that's what it's called. Um, I did end up watching the series. There's only eight episodes or something so far, um, but I really do want to read those books. But I prefer, I prefer to read the books before watching whatever it is. I feel like I understand it better. Like something like Game of Thrones, I don't know how people watch that without reading it because there are so many characters and it gets so confusing. Um, but yeah, that's one thing I've been watching. Uh, what else have I been watching? I started watching the Nancy Drew series. The first season was not bad. The second season, I'm like, God, this Nancy Drew character is really annoying. I, I was really intrigued to watch it. So that was another set of books. Growing up, those were the books that I really liked to read when I was like in like grade three or grade four. Um, I really liked the Nancy Drew books. I never finished them though. I'd always like run out of time and have to return turn them before I finish them. Like, I think I only ever finished a handful, but I tried to read a lot of them. I don't remember any of them. It was so long ago. How is that looking? I think I need to do a bit more on this eye. Um, what else? So I'm reading, I'm currently reading, is it The Lost Symbol? Dan Brown. Um, it's old, obviously. It's like, I don't know, decade old. It's been out for a while. I think there's a TV show on that too. Um, if I'm not mistaken. I've read the first two, Angels and Demons and The Da Vinci Code. I have not read Inferno, but I have seen Inferno. I'm not, it's not sticking to the inside of my eye on this eye. I don't know. What do you guys think? I feel like it's, I'm not sure I'm loving it. <laughs> I need to play with that more. I have no idea what I'm doing here. Yeah. I feel like I just want to like start packing it on, but that was kind of not what I wanted to do. It does go really well with this palette though. Okay, I'm gonna maybe go in with a darker color on the outer portion of my eyes. I think I'm gonna start with Groove, and if that doesn't work, I might do Rebellion, or I might just go in with the brown, which is a part. But let's start with Groove. The one thing that I've been doing lately is playing video games again. <laughs> I go through phases with video games. I generally only play video games in the, in the winter time um, because I can be like addicted. I can play a video game for like eight hours. <laughs> it's bad. Um, but I fired up my Xbox 360 just the other day and I started playing. I bought a game like two years ago because I haven't had an, uh, you get like an Xbox Gold membership. I haven't had that for like two years. But when you have that, you can like, you get free games every month and then you get um, discounts on other games. So I bought a Lego Star Wars, the Clone Wars game. I love the Lego games. <laughs> They're so fun. Because it doesn't matter how many times like your character dies. Like you, you can really suck at the game, but still get through it. I hate games where it's like, you can't get past a certain point because you like keep dying. There's a game, what is it? I think it's called Dragon Age. I messed up. <laughs> You have to sort of do things in a certain sequence and I messed up right near the very end. I can't finish it because I, I effed up right at the end. And like, cause you have to sort of build like an, almost an army of like different powers of people. And yeah, I messed it up and I didn't realize that I totally foobarred it. So I was like Googling online to see like, well, how do I get past this? What do I do? And people were like, yeah, if you've done X, Y, Z, you're, you're screwed. You can't, like, it'll be really, really hard to sort of beat the end guy. So I have, I just like abandoned that game. Yeah, I love the I love the Lego games. Um, 
I've downloaded some games. I have Steam on my laptop and I've downloaded some games from there. So I have Stardew Valley. So I've played Stardew Valley. People are always like, it's such a relaxing game. I find it kind of slightly stressful. <laughs> There's a lot you can do in the game, which is a little overwhelming. And the game is time-based. So like you have like, it's like, you know, life, you're a farmer. And so you only have so much time in a day and I get really anxious around time. <laughs> so I'm like, oh my God, I only have like 30 minutes left to do X, Y, Z. And I get, I get panicky. So it's, it's not necessarily super relaxing for me at times to play that game, um, but I like it. It's super cute. Um, there's another game that's super cute. It's kind of expensive, um, but I felt like it was worth buying. Um, support an indie uh, gaming company. It's called Unpacking. It's super cute. It's really short, um, but it's all about like unpacking your life through like different stages of your life. So at one point you're like a child and your family has moved to a new home, so you're unpacking your room, and then, you know, you go off to college, and you're unpacking your room. Like, it's super cute, and I feel seen <laughs> by some of the things that they put in there. I was like, yeah, that, that thing that keeps coming with you, or, like, the little ukulele that, like, sits around with no stand. I still don't have a stand for my guitar. <laughs> I've had it forever, um, which I've talked about. Like, I just have, I've had it for a really long time, and I just started learning how to play. Still real slow at that, but we're getting there. Um, but yeah, just it's it's a cute little game, but it's it's short. Like you kind of finish it in a few hours type of thing, um, but super cute. So yeah, I've been getting back into gaming a little bit. One of the reasons why I sort of abandoned it too is this channel. Like this stuff takes a long time for me to do, and like I said, gaming. Like I will spend a whole day gaming, <laughs> which I don't really have that kind of time anymore, or at least I haven't really made that sort of time. But to me, it's a great escape. I love video games and I love like easy ones like I think there's nothing wrong with playing a game that's easy like who cares as long as you're having fun like for me it's entertainment value it's not meant to be stressful <laughs> I think that worked out well that's like a pretty dramatic okay let's get on to the face so I'm just doing my ordinary project pan stuff the Fab Coconut Skin Smoothie Priming Moisturizer Primer thing. The name is stupid long. I love this product. I think I just even like the smell of it. I like the smell, I like the texture. <laughs> Bangs. We'll come back and finish the eyes. I'm, I'm not done. But might as well just do some of the face first. <coughs> Using my CoverGirl foundation. I love this foundation. So the other day, um, I actually filmed a video <laughs> this look and I was like, thank God it doesn't really show on camera. I combined this foundation with the, I think it's like the Becca Love Foundation or Skin Love Foundation. I think I might need to declutter that because my makeup looked so, so, <laughs> sorry, so bad. <laughs> I, I tried to use it because I thought, well, it's a bit lighter than this foundation so maybe it's a good way to like I could use it as a lightning foundation and it just my makeup was sitting so bad on my face I did not like the way it looked and again maybe it's just because it's too light it, it just doesn't look good I'm so sad though because I just bought that last year and I had high hopes for it but I might have to declutter it because if I can't if it won't work like blended with other foundations. Like I already kind of know, I don't think it looks good on its own. Um, I don't know, I tried it on and off and sometimes it looks okay, but it's too much of a crap shoot. Like, I don't want to be like, is it gonna work, is it not gonna work? Kind of thing with my foundation. I just want to know it's gonna work, right? Right? I also have this thing, this red dot. I, I never mentioned it before. I don't know if you noticed it earlier. I don't know what that is. It keeps showing up and it's not a zit. Like there's nothing there, but it's like this red dot. I think I must, I don't sleep on my hand. I don't know. There must be something I'm doing while I'm sleeping. Cause every once in a while, and it's always in the same spot. And I can't figure out what it is. Anyway, just a nice thin layer of that. Well, that's concealer. So I bought this guy. This is the NYX Bear With Me Conceal Serum. I bought this in the shade beige I think which was I, I was like mm, this might be too dark but the shade I was looking at I think was called porcelain it was one up from this oh yeah here we go here here comes the sun 
it gets too bright, I will have to adjust. Um, so yeah, I feel like I should have got a brighter shade, but there was none available when I bought this. Like there was no brighter, sh or like no lighter shades. I think the lightest, lightest shade was available. I'm like, mm. oh, focus, camera, hello, I'm over here. <laughs> hello, I don't know what just happened there. Yeah, okay, I'm gonna fix my blinds because I think this is gonna be problematic. Just a minute. There we go. I hope that's gonna be okay. So yeah, so this this is fine. The shade is fine. It's just not brightening. I do wanna get a brighter shade. This is, so it comes in a pump. I feel like you get a lot in a single pump. Like a lot goes a long way. It's a kind of a weird, I haven't figured out how I feel about this yet because I feel like like you get a lot, like a lot of product comes out in one pump, but then when you start blending it out, it's actually not as full coverage as I was expecting it. Um, but yeah, like see how, how much product does come out? And that was not even a full pump. Like I was trying to be super delicate with it. And like this shade is a good skin tone match for me. It's like my skin tone, but if I want it brightening under the eyes, it's not brightening at all. Yeah, it's not as full coverage as I was expecting it to be. I mean, it doesn't look bad on camera. Um, I don't know. I guess I, like, I was expecting more coverage when so much product came out. But then it, it sort of shears out. That must be what it is. It sort of like thins out. Um, I do like the texture. I do like the way it sits on my face. It seems to wear well. Like I don't feel like it's super patchy or anything. I need to really play with it. I do want to do like a more in-depth concealer type review, but I want to get a bunch of different concealers and really, really test some out. Um, and I do think I want to get this in a brighter shade because I think I will like the next shade up a little bit better. Okay, just throwing a bit of powder on. My Clinique powder for my project pan. And then the next thing I've got to play with that's new is this. This is the Buxom, what did they call this? Staycation Vibes. Rooftop Tan Primer Infused Bronzer. So I popped into Marshalls the other day. I wasn't intending to buy anything. And then I saw this and I'm like, I have to get it. I have to buy it. Um, it looks a little orangey on camera. And I know like when I swatch it, it'll look a little orangey, but I feel like it works. Um, it also looks a little light, but I still feel like it works. So that's it on the side of my hand there. But I've actually liked how this has looked. I've only worn it a couple times, but I feel like it looks really nice on. I'm quite happy with it. I really did not need to buy a bronzer. <laughs> but yeah, it gets a little orangey. There, there was one other shade that I saw on Sephora. I can't remember the name of the shade. And I'm like, yeah, that probably would have been a better shade. It looked a bit more neutral pinky based. Um, but yeah, like the, the pigment on this... <laughs> It's really good for like, again, it doesn't look like much when you swatch it, but when you put it on, oof. Yeah, I had to get this. This was one of those things. So I know I probably don't have room in my budget for this and I'm going to be in the negative, but I was like, you know what? I'm not passing it up. I did put a few things back. So I, I have one other thing here that I bought from Marshalls, but I did put, um, I put a mascara back and I put nail polish back. I still want to buy some like OPI. I've been seeing a lot of mini sets from OPI um, and I've never tried OPI nail polish. So I want to buy one of those mini sets at some point. Um, but anyway, this is one thing I hate with my eyeshadow. I feel like as my, my eyes like fall, <laughs> my eyelids fall like brow bone, it starts to like mush this around. Does anybody else have that? And I feel like I need to keep blending the edge. Anyway, speaking of eyebrows, next product I want to play with is this. It's gotten real dark again. This is the NYX Thick It Stick It Thickening Brow Mascara. Again, I've been playing with all these things, so nothing's new here. I really like this. I do want to get this in a deeper shade. I got this in taupe. Taupe matches really well with taupe from ABH. So if you have anything that's taupe from ABH, I feel like this taupe blends really well with it. I like this. Um, 
compared to the ABH brow gel. Um, and I like it over the, what do you call it? Essence one. Um, because it, it has hold. Like it definitely has some good hold to it. Now I don't have enough eyebrows for this kind of a product. So I kind of have to use this and then do something else to sort of finish out the brows. But I've been kind of playing with this a couple different ways and I prefer to go in with this first. Um, it still works going in with it after too, but sometimes it's nice to go in with this first and then use something else to sort of like fill in the holes. But I have to like wipe off a lot of the product cause I don't have a lot of brows. So like it works for the front part of my brows where I actually have hairs. Um, at the end of my brow, oops. Yeah, see that's, um, but I like this cause it actually does have hold to it. I feel, I need that. Give me all the crusty brows, please. <laughs> and again, this is a product that I think I wanna buy a deeper shade in cause I think a deeper shade might have a better effect for me. I'm just always hesitant to get a deeper shade at times. Again, it's not enough for me. Like my eyebrows are so uneven and I need to like try and balance them out. So I'm gonna try and balance them out and then we'll be back. Okay, brows are done-ish. <laughs> they're never, they're always a mess. I know, you don't have to tell me. It is what it is. So I'm just gonna go in with the Rare Beauty Blush. Just tap a little bit of it on can't over blend this or it will disappear. So yeah, what else is going on? I don't know. Um, I'm trying to plan a vacation with my friend, <laughs> the vacation that we canceled in 2020. We were supposed to go to Italy. So we're hoping to go to Italy this year. Um, we've been talking about dates and I gotta go back and look at what our original plan was. I think we were gonna do like Rome and sort of that side of things. I mean, I wanna to go to Italy multiple times <laughs> to see multiple places of it. Um, there's not enough days and times um, to go see it. This is just Milk Makeup Highlighter in Lit. Again, just kinda of going pretty lightly with that. So really hope, hope we can get that trip going because <laughs> I'd love to go somewhere. It would be lovely. If it doesn't happen, it doesn't happen. The only thing I'm super worried about, I don't know if I talked about this in my last video, we had vouchers um, and they were extended. I don't know if they're gonna expire or they'll let us extend again if things don't work out. This is just my Rimmel liner from my project pan. Has anybody watching been to Italy or are you from Italy? Any recommendations? I'm hoping for like a fairly casual trip. Our last trip was to Peru and Machu Picchu and we walked and it was exhausting. <laughs> I almost died. A little dramatic, but felt like it. This is the McQueen liner in, uh, what do you call it? Aura Heroine. So this is in my punk project pan. I've been trying to do, learn a little bit of Italian from Duolingo. <laughs> it's going. Yo beve, or maybe it's yo bevo. No, I think it's yo beve. It means I drink. <laughs> that's how we're, that's how we're going. I'm terrible with languages. Um, even if I might understand it, I can't speak it. Um, like, for example, I know chicken in Spanish is P-O-L-L-O. -L -L -O. My brain wants to say polo every time, <laughs> but I know you don't say the L's, yet I can't. As soon as I say it, I say it wrong every time. I'm like, ah, I don't know why I do that. Like I can understand the gist of things in French most of the time, but I can't speak French. And I, like I, I say most of the time, I say like basic French. Like if I were watching like a children's show in French, I could probably get, get what's going on. Um, or like, you know, if somebody's like speaking like in the news where they speak a little bit slower, TV shows are a bit different. It's, it's funny because I was watching, um, so speaking of TV shows, I was watching a show called The Black Spot, which is not at all, the name in English is, or the name in French is like White Zone, but they've called it The Black Spot in the English version. And 
so I watched it in subtitles, um, but just heard it, like listened to it in French. And it's a French, like France French. France French and Canadian French are completely different by the way. <laughs> They're very different, they sound different. Um, and I was, I found it so funny to hear when they're speaking in French, how fast they speak and how they just drop a lot of stuff. And I guess we do that in English too, but when you're learning a language, you learn the full like structure sentence and they just sort of like casually, you know, drop things here and there and say things so like fluidly. And it's like, yeah, I guess, you know, that's what makes it really difficult to, even though you're learning it through like a program or through school, when it comes to real life, it's very different. And the thing that I, I found out too, or not found out, but it was funny. Somebody was talking about, they know how to speak Spanish. They learned it when like they lived in New York from like their neighbors and stuff. And they went to California and they were speaking Spanish. And I guess they were using all the wrong words. Like there's certain words from East Coast to West Coast that's completely different. Um, people were super confused by what she was saying. Um, and I thought that was pretty funny. It's not somebody I know, it was somebody on Twitter was saying this. I was like, yeah, I guess I never thought about that. Okay, I'm really liking this eye look. The more, the more I look at it, the more I'm like, ew, speckly. <laughs> it turned out really pretty. Okay, let's leave that at that. I might fuss with the lower lash line later. I don't know, but I wanna, I wanna wrap this up. I've been filming for a while and I just wanna get on with my life. Um, this lip color doesn't match the eye look, so I'm just gonna put it on though to show it. This is the Wayne Goss lipstick that I got in Dahlia. It is a little light, it is a little orange. I'm not sure how I feel about it yet. I like the formula. Um, I find it interesting. It smells like a lipstick. Like there's nothing in it that like masks that whatsoever, which is good and bad, I guess. Um, but anyway, so that's Dahlia again. I'm not sure I love that color on me, um, but we'll play with it. I think with a pinker lip liner, it's gonna look nice. And again, I like the way it feels. It's nice creamy lipstick, not mask safe whatsoever. <laughs> um, but let's put on another lip product. So the other thing I picked up at Winners was this Bite. I don't even know the name of this product. Um, this is in Guava Puff. Um, I should go find the box and see what the actual name of this product is. I've been seeing people post this on their like Winners, Marshalls, TJ Maxx videos. And I was super intrigued by this, so I decided to pick it up. Another lip gloss I did not need. I am kicking myself for not buying a deeper shade because um, they had a couple shades. There was one shade that was like something donut and it looked kind of dark in the tube. But I'm now thinking it would have been really nice on because um, this is a little light, um, but like it doesn't add much color at all. <laughs> now I'm getting like, ah. <laughs> oh dear, what is going on? Sorry guys, sun, sun is starting to come out and I think that means it's time for me to wrap up. So I'm going to just go fix my bangs. I might fuss with my little lash line and my eyebrows a little bit more and then we'll come back and wrap up this video. Okay, so here we are with the final look. I did add a little bit of groove to my lower lash line and yeah, that's it. I don't know if I finished my thoughts on this. I'm feeling a little scatterbrained today, um, but I do really like this lip gloss. Uh, I, do, I do wish I picked a bit of a deeper shade because um, this doesn't really actually add any color to my lips, but it's a really nice shine. It's a nice feel. I like the smell. It's a little sticky for like a lip gloss, but not too bad. I mean, it's a lip gloss. <laughs> Here comes the sun again. Yeah, I really like how the eye looked turned out. The sun's actually, maybe it's helping me here because it's showing you how sparkly that foil is. Um, I really, oh my gosh, oh, that's really coming out. <laughs> okay. I need to fix my blinds, just a second. I've played with this palette like a few times, I think maybe three times now, and I really enjoy all the looks that I've gotten out of it. Um, this one's the most dramatic. I've been normally like kind of going in with some of these like lighter shades. Um, this is the first time I've gone a bit more dramatic. But yeah, I really like that in combination with this. I don't see myself using this a whole lot, to be honest. Um, it is a bit finicky to get the look that I want. I don't think it would build up to like a full opaque. Um, I, I'd like to try it on like a bare eyelid, but like probably have to put a bit of concealer to just like blank out the eyelid. 
and then try it like that, see what it looks like. But it did work really well over top the colors I picked in the Natasha Nona, and it just over well in general over top of eyeshadow. Curious how it will wear through the day, but yeah, er, the more I look at my eyelids, I'm like, ooh, pretty. <laughs> like, I'm really liking this look. Um, it's a very Valentine's look. This will go up after Valentine's by the time I get it edited and posted, but yeah, I'm really enjoying this eye look, really enjoying the makeup that I played with today. Again, another couple new things that I got. Really enjoyed this. Um, I do like this. I think it looks pretty good under my eyes. I'd like to get a different shade because you can see like this is basically my skin tone. Like it mel melds quite well with the foundation. It's definitely not brightening in any sense. And it'd be nice to try a brightening shade. And then yeah, this again, I had to play with it a little bit more because I still feel like, I feel like some days it looks really good and other days it doesn't look great. My eyebrows look so wonky all the time. So I'll never find anything that works perfectly, but I do quite like the texture of this. And I think I wanna try it in a darker shade and see how that turns out. But it's not within the budget right now. I am definitely over budget. Um, hopefully at least I'm like not too bad. I know I'm already in the red for my February budget, um, but hopefully I'll have some stuff in March that I'm like back in the positive, but I think my March budget's gonna be real teeny tiny <laughs> anyway. That's the finished look. I hope you liked this video. If you did, feel free to give it a thumbs up down below. And if you haven't already, I would love it if you, if you subscribe to my channel here in Toronto, Canada. I hope you're doing well, and I'll see you sometime soon. Bye.